Luz said they did not have beds. They were actually treat, giving IVs to people inside the car. Inside the car. Outside, outside the, the main ward. That's where they were giving IVs to people. Now, they told us they didn't have any beds. Anyways, um, we're just talking about governance in Nigeria. And it's quite unfortunate. <laughs> redownload your Instagram. I've just redownloaded it. <laughs> oh, I did that. <laughs> Well, anyways, I'm just gonna carry on. I'm not gonna stay on for long now because I was supposed to do this with Yemi Fash, so we'll probably have to, we'll probably have to do another time. Um, but Kesolo, okay, do you know what Kesolo? Can you? I've just updated it. I've just deleted. It. I've just redownloaded it. I make mean, I try, try. Let me see if it works. You my beloved. Uh. Anyways, bottom line, what I was trying to say is I can understand that things work differently in the UK um, compared to how things work in Nigeria, but we should stop looking at UK like heaven compared to Nigeria. I can, there was a day like, a, was it Nengi or like a, oh yeah, magic day. I'm actually frustrated because I've been trying to add people onto my live video, but it's not working. It keeps saying unable to join. And it's really pissing me off because I'm trying to get people's opinions on what I'm talking about. But never mind, it's all good. I'll just carry on like that. Um, was it Nengi talking about, like, um, treatment and stuff like that? You know, in the UK, yeah, I'll tell you the process. As much as everybody looks at the UK like, okay, now, first of all, when people are in Nigeria, one of the first things they say is, Oh, this person is not feeling well. They're not doing properly in Nigeria. Let's fly. Let's fly the person out of Nigeria. Let's go get medical help. Yeah, that's fine. You will get that immediate medical help provided you've got your money. Yeah. So that's why Facebook is changing to Meta. Is that why? So it could be the issue. Okay. Like you will get the medical attention immediately. So far, you've got your money. But then I'll talk from my own personal experience, right? Now, Say, let's just say I'm in Nigeria and I know that um, diagnosing yourself is wrong. I know that very, I know that very well. I know that self-medication is wrong as hell as well. I'm very aware. But let's say I have a boil, yeah, in Nigeria. All I have to do, I walk into the pharmacy like, I'll easily walk to the pharmacy. Oh, I've got a boil on my face. Can I get antibiotics? You also probably get, like, a second opinion. Well, the downside of doing that in a Nigerian pharmacy, if you go to somewhere like H-Medics, where they sell one medication for about 5,000 naira, they would probably try to tell you, oh, maybe you should also use this one and use that one and use that one so you're buying additional medications. But guess what? You will still, anyway, you will still get what you need. In the UK, I'll tell you what. I've got this thing, um, palpitations, right? Like, usually I'm good. But I could stay here. My heart starts beating fast. So now I called my doctor since, and I'm not exaggerating, right? I called my doctor since May, uh, my GP. Oh, uh, I've got so, so, so stuff, blah, 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 blah. And they go, oh, we're going to do like a referral for you and stuff like that. ECG, yada, yada, yada. And I swear to God, do you guys know when this appointment is for? It's for next month. Yeah? So now my question is, what if I've died in the, in, 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 the, in the few months? It's not always as rosy as everybody thinks it is in Nigeria. You people think we cough in the UK and then woo -woo, doctors are running, you're sick, you're getting all the medication, you're getting everything. Bruv, before they can even prescribe you an antibiotic in this country, they want to know that there's a cogent reason for you to have an antibiotic. Meanwhile, in Nigeria, you can walk easily to the pharmacy. This is what it is. You can get it immediately. And that's why sometimes here, I feel that they also delay when, they, when it comes to making decisions when it comes to your health. Because let's say COVID period, right? DJ Magic J, I'm actually glad you're here because you live here and you know all these things. COVID period, you could not see your personal doctor. They would do phone consultation so how do you actually do a phone consultation to fully know my diagnosis to fully understand what is wrong with me 
if it's a different thing if i'm talking to you on the phone and i sound okay than if you're looking at me in real life and i look like i'm about to die but how can you tell when you're doing phone consultation how many people in nigeria do phone consultation no but because you people bring your money here from nigeria for medical attention it looks like oh uk is so good of course they're collecting money from you they will answer you immediately and you don't go to the general clinic you go to a private one that's where you get treated that's why and also even if you decided to go into the nhs you will still pay for your treatment do you understand that so it's the, the processes are quite different and of course i will also tell you the same way yeah we discriminate against each other in nigeria unfortunately for us in nigeria what we do is try we discriminate against each other according to tribe, according to the background, according to how rich your parents are, how blah, 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 blah. Let's just say tribe is our main issue in Nigeria. And as I was saying earlier as well, when you want to compare UK to Nigeria, as I was driving home, there was a pitch black area with no traffic light, with no, with no street, I'm not traffic light, I'm so sorry, with no street lights whatsoever. But again, this happens in Nigeria, but then we moan so much about it if it's in Nigeria. I'm not saying it's right, but at the end of the day, UK is not paradise compared to Nigeria. UK is just a country that has its own faults, but they know how to conceal their imperfections. Meanwhile, Nigeria, instead of all of us working together to say, do you know what? Let's do this together. Everybody likes to do the government, the president, the commissioner, the blah, blah, blah. Everybody likes to blame somebody for it and religion too. Absolutely. Everybody likes to blame someone for it. Nobody wants to take responsibility for anything. Which again, I keep saying it, we will not move forward in Nigeria. You see, it will be very hard, very actually hard to move forward in Nigeria 10 years from now. Do you know why? Because a lot of youths that are even clamoring to say, oh, I want to be, I want to be a politician. I want to be up there. I want to make a change. I want to make a difference. Guess what? Those, those people, yeah. So now I'm sat here and I'm talking about my desire to change something. And then a, a politician says that this person is gathering momentum. This person has got followers. This is a, and then they call you and they say to you, all right, we're going to come to an agreement. You're going to drop the ambition. But I'll send you 100 million to drop your ambition. That's how a lot of youth do not ever come up because things like this will continue to happen. And as long as you continue to also accept what they're offering you, you would never, ever be able to make a change, first-hand change, the way that you want to. Imagine somebody that collects money from the government. How would I then come online and say, you went to London for treatment. Couldn't you have stayed in Nigeria? Silenced for a long time, probably for the rest of my life. Do you understand that? And because there's also poverty mentality among all of us, which is, ah, when I get there, Omo, because we've made... The reason a lot of people actually want to be politicians is not because they want to serve the people. It's not because they see a desire and say, this is not working fine. I want to be the one to do it. It's really because the work of a politician looks so glamorous. It looks so, so decorated that everybody wants to do it. Because an average politician moves with security. They've got money for allowance. They travel. They fly, they fly first class. They've, they've got the baddest girls. They've got all of that. That's why a lot of people want to be politicians, but they don't understand that it is more than that. You're supposed to be a representative for the people, to stand in for the people, speak for the people, make sure you're accessible to the people. But a lot of people still don't get that because if you now start to make politics very unattractive, say to people, tell people right now that the salary of a politician and they do not get wardrobe allowance, they don't get car allowance, they don't get anything. Tell them that all the politician will get is 200k a month. Let us see how many people still want to be politicians. Let's see. So, you, you understand that? Somebody with, <laughs> somebody will just wake up one day, make one street money, blah, 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 blah. And again, this is what I said. If you spend about 610 million, six, six, 700 million on an election, 
to be a politician guess what you want to do first when you're going in there you're not going to serve the people that's not your priority right now let's not lie to each other your first priority is bro i've spent so much money i need to make my money back that's their focus but by the time you start to make politics unattractive to people people will step back and understand that politics is not for wearing a badge and flying to london in first class and that's why it will continue to upset me that People in Nigeria, or I don't know what person, said that they're going to start stopping doctors from flying to the UK to work in the UK. What audacity do you have to say that? If these people spend so many years in the university, have carryovers, you don't pay their parents' salaries, they borrow money, they strive so hard, they pay the, they pay the school fees, they become doctors eventually, but you don't give them an avenue to now practice. Now, they come to the UK by chance. Yeah, and then you also fly to the UK. Unfortunately for you, these same doctors will still be the ones to treat you in the UK. Guess what you're forgetting to do? You're forgetting to build your own country. So you're flying to another country to come and seek medical attention after wasting these people's. So why have you allowed me to go through school if you will not actually pay me and develop me for the skills that I have? What is the point? Do you know how many? Nigerian doctors are in the UK right now. There are a lot of them. Smart people. Smart people. In my hospital, there are a lot of them. Do you understand that? And my area is not even a Nigerian area. It's not like Nigerian diluted area. Now, let's talk about the areas that are Nigerians. You will be so proud. They, they'll come to London for medical treatment. They will neglect. So, if you know that you are doing so well, why are you neglecting the medical facilities in your own country, yet you are borrowing money every now and then? What are you borrowing money for? Where is the money going to? The money that, they keep, that Nigeria keeps borrowing, where exactly is it going to? Because I don't see it. Maybe it's a private institution, but I don't know. Because I would assume that Nigeria would have like a mad hospital, a mad hospital where there's functioning equipment. I will tell you something. I was the last time I was in Accra. I'm not trying to ruin Accra. Thankfully, was it? Of course, it was Yemi Fash that was with me. I went to Accra. I wanted to do ECG. Yeah. Okay. They've put everything. The test was done. Guess what? There was no paper to print out the result. If if that was an emergency situation and they needed that ECG to confirm something before the next treatment, guess what would have happened? Negligence. But somebody will sit down there and tell me I have to pay 10,000 naira for ECG or 20,000 naira for ECG. Because even after that ECG that they didn't have paper to print out my results, the lady at the, at the counter still had the audacity to tell me, so are you going to pay now? What am I paying for? For results that I did not get or for you strapping for you strapping stuff on my chest without getting the results, what am I actually paying you for? They have the, the attitude of the people. And again, there are a lot of people I will not blame. Because you go, you walk into a, a typical like state hospital in Nigeria. I've been to one before. I was passing by. A bike had hit a man on the road. Yeah, An old man. He was on the floor there. And... Everybody was there shouting. Hey, hey, hey. This is one thing that pisses me off so much about Nigerians. And I'll say it now. And if you're on this live video, it's time for you to start making a change because we need to be educated. The first thing you do, you see an accident victim on the floor. You should not be there. Hey, Bamil, help, help. So what is that going to do for the patient? What is, what is, how is that going to make the life of that person better? How is that... Instead of you to be using your, you, you use your internet, I cannot tell you what to use your internet allowance for, but instead of you to, instead of you using it to troll celebrities, use it to go on YouTube, go and watch how to do basic life support for people. A lot of people will still be alive if we had the knowledge to resuscitate. It's common resuscitation to stop from, someone from having a heart attack or, or from passing, but we don't know it. We are so woke when it comes to the things that are so irrelevant and things that will not better our life in any way. But the most important things, we are zero when it comes to it. Somebody collapses in front of you right now. You don't know what to do. Apart from, ah, hey, Bamiyo, hey, 
Bruv, you're talking about calling the ambulance in Nigeria. Ambulance that will use that they will use the ambulance to carry yam. Forget it. There's a lot of things wrong with us in Nigeria. And I will continue to say, bruv, no. An active accident victim is on the floor. You don't know what to do. I passed, okay? I said, do you know what? Let's, I told my friends, let's take this guy to the hospital. I'm not going to put this guy inside the car that I'm driving, but let's find another way. My other friend took him. They got to the hospital. We went there. I paid, blah, blah, blah. Now, this hospital took money from us. I admitted this man. The next day, they called me to say, oh, we can't treat him. We're going to have to transfer him to another hospital. So they now transferred him to loot. And I'll, I'll continue. To, we got to loot now. Bear in mind, I don't know this man from Adam. Okay? I saw him on the floor. No concern me. But the one thing is, that could have easily been my family member. <coughs> that could be my friend. That could be anybody. That's, somebody, that's someone's parents, regardless. Yeah? We got to loot. <coughs> The first thing that happened in Luth that I saw, there were a couple, yeah, standing outside. Their child was inside the, the bay. This man and the woman, they kept begging the security man by the door. Can we please see our son? Can we go in there? Can we just see him? Can we just see how he's doing? The security man kept saying no. Unfortunately, when you put a uniform on an idiot, they start to think they have power. They do like this. You understand? There's nothing in their head, but they think they have so much power. <clears throat> the guy didn't allow them to go in. At some, at some point, one of the parents actually forced himself inside. Yeah? He went inside. Next thing, the child is dead. The man ran outside, shouting, my child is dead. My ch it starts rolling on the floor. The wife starts crying. Both of them start rolling on the floor. Bruv, I was there. <clears throat> I had tears in my eyes. I didn't know these people from anywhere. But guess what the nurses were saying? The nurses said, boss, please, can you just move a little bit further? You are disturbing other patients. Ah, uh, this was the... F <laughs> Somebody is grieving, yeah? Their child, a little child that's not more than seven, just died. They are shouting. They're in agony. The only thing that can come out of your mouth is, can you please move to the other side? You're disturbing other patients. Who are the other patients they are disturbing? And Luth said they did not have beds. They were actually treated, giving IVs to people inside the car. Inside the car. Outside, outside the, the main ward. That's where they were giving IVs to people. Now, they told us they didn't have any beds. We now went for x-ray for this man. Was it a CT scan? A CT for this man. We told the person that, oh, they said they don't have beds. The person said, ah, sort them out now. They will give you bed. In a, in a state hospital, you have to sort somebody out to give you bed. This is how people die in Nigeria. The attitude of the people at the top the management, the staff themselves, is as if some of you have swallowed devilish. You have no empathy anymore. It's gone. Gone. 100%. It doesn't exist. Because how can you watch somebody die? And you just casually, like you're just so casual about it, like it doesn't affect you. You just, you said we should go and sort somebody out for bed. How does that even work? The attitude of the nurses was just like, that's up to you. But then again, there are two ways to look at it. You will look at it as a lot of these people are not even qualified. A lot of people get jobs in Nigeria by Abego. Do you know? Can you help me put my daughter in Kinikokino? Because it's fine, she will learn on the job. Yeah, that's how a lot of people get jobs in Nigeria. So that's one. So they will not even understand the basics of nursing that's that's one thing number two <clears throat> on the other side a lot of people don't have passion for what they do in nigeria it's just a job is a job and i'm trying to get paid and let's be honest about it 
a lot of us do our jobs because the first priority of you having a job is your salary. That's what concerns you. And then your passion might follow. For a lot of people, it's passion. But for a lot of people, it's the salary. Typical, okay? So if you're not paying somebody well, if you're owing them salaries, why do you think they will come to work with so much gladness and eagerness to work? They will not. And they will not care whatever happens at work. It's just for them to come, do their hours shift, and they're done. They're gone. My friend was telling me a couple of days back that his mom was in the hospital. Bruv, they were leaving dead people in the same, in the same room as them. That they will leave, they will leave cops eh, there for like a whole day, for two days. How? I don't understand. It starts from us. The attitude is bad, even the people that want it. Um, bruv, it's, it's horrible. I started business admin. But it was when I came back from NYC that I, I, I started this whole nursing situation thing. There were a lot of things that I had to learn on the job. But they will not teach you how to have empathy on the job. It's something that comes from you having human feelings and you understanding pain. It's, it's you being human. They don't teach you that. Because ordinarily that I see a relative crying that somebody in their family just died, I have tears in my eyes. If you die, your family members die, you're not concerned, they're waiting to be their own. They're just there for the shift and they're done. The same hospitals you will go to, the doctors will say, let me check your blood pressure. Let me, re let me, let me listen to your heartbeat. And it's putting stethoscope on your nipple because maybe your nipple is suddenly, is suddenly beaten. There's a lot of things wrong. They don't even understand ethics in the workplace. A doctor sees a patient, a fine patient, and is there like trying to chat up. It's a lot of things wrong. And this is why I continue to say we cannot continue to blame the government because imagine a doctor comes into work and, oh, let me, let me check your heart. And you're, you're touching my breast. How has that got to do with the president? How is that the president's fault? It's you as a person that changed that. And we will not change anything until we start to look at ourselves and say, do you know what? Namide, fuck up. And look at ourselves and say, wait, is it not, was it not on Instablog this morning that um, there's a hospital in Nigeria they had to shut down because there were foreigners working in the hospital that did not even qualify, that are not even qualified for that position? So imagine, and the unfortunate things about we Nigerians is we look at anybody with a different skin color that is not black as more intelligent than us. They are not. We are probably more intelligent than them, but for some reason, we give so much priority to people with a different skin color. We don't need to. What do they have to offer you apart from accent? A lot of Nigerians can sit down. My niece has and she has a British accent and she doesn't live here. She watches it on the TV. So if it's by accent, are you really that dumb that somebody would sell you with an accent? I see how Nigerians treat Chinese people in Nigeria. A Chinese guy will be like, it be like conductor, it be like rag. You go see fine babe, they follow her for a short price. She to go they go they up and carry trolley up and down. She they feel like say she don't marry international boy. Jesus. Who did this to us? Omo, um, poverty mentality is the number one thing we need to take out of, of ourselves in Nigeria. We need to take it out. Because <laughs> if this is how we're going, we will never go anywhere. And the poverty that has been created will continue to be used as a weapon against us for the rest of our lives. And we'll continue to be slaves to the government. We'll continue to be slaves onto the 5,000 naira that is given during election time. And let me remind you that that 5,000 naira will only last you a week or will not last you more than a week. For myself and my friends to eat at the place, it will cost us about 5,000 naira for three plates of food at the place. And that's it gone in lunch time. So imagine that you're, you're taking 5,000 naira for the f next four years of your life to suffer. When you make decisions, continue to understand at this point that the decisions you're making is not for you alone. It's for your family members. 
is for the people coming behind you. So there needs to be a change. We cannot continue to sit down here, banting up and down, not understanding and not realizing that there's a future and we need to be in that future. Because children are the leaders of tomorrow. Buari has been the leader since I was in primary school. Atiku, Abi, I say Atiku. Eh, even Atiku, join. Tinubu, join. Old old men. Understand? You look at the governor of Ondo State, he looks fine. He looks young. Apparently, he's, he's even younger than Tinubu, Abi, whatever it is. But you are enabling them. Part of that carcass that we cannot tell the truth because of the little things that we have to benefit from it. You say the truth and you cannot say it. Because somehow, somehow, somebody is dropping little drops of water from their ocean to you. And you do not think that you're mentally capable of also having an ocean. Even the people that are dead do not have the mental capacity that you and I have. It's just the opportunity that we do not have. Think about it. I don't do the one we God send me. Good night.